G'day world and welcome back to Stuff We Do, where we do all the knife stuff you love. Knife reviews, knife tests, knife modifications and outdoor stuff with knives. Today we are talking about the 1907 model bayonet for a Lee Enfield rifle. Okay, um, it's quite difficult to get this whole thing in, but let me quickly show you. We'll go through everything now. This 1907 model bayonet was made by Lee Enfield because there, um, I might say this wrong, I think it's the Mark III, no, something 1 Mark III or Mark III something 1. I'll put links in the description. Anyway, in South Africa we call it a donkey oor, Drinal Dri. So it's the old um, 303 caliber Lee Enfield rifle with the weird knobs at the top. Okay, now there's a round hole that fits in here and then over here we have a, I hope you can see that, when you push this, there's can you see that? Let me just get some light in there. Okay, anyway, so it moves in and out. And then you slide this onto the front of your um, rifle. And that is your bayonet. The reasoning behind this was um, the 303 that this fits on, the Lee Enfield, is a shorter gun. So they made this thing extra long so that the guys using those guns with these bayonets would not be in a disadvantage against other people. Okay, let's quickly look at a few of these markings. Well, the ones we can see at this stage. We have the crown there. Let's see if we can get this. There we go. Okay, we see this uh, 19007. That's not the year, that's the model. And then we see the crown over there. That's for George V. At the bottom, we see Wilkinson. Um, this was Wilkinson made this. This is before Wilkinson sword or whatever. And then um, there's two extra markings. Over there and then there. Which is 3 and the 18. Okay, that is the actual date of this bayonet. The 3 is for March and the 18 is 1918. Now this thing fits onto... The 1917 Lee Enfield that my father still owns. Um, we had two. He gave me one, but I changed it and it became, um, well, I modernized it a bit and now I'm still using it for hunting rifle today. Okay, the other one is still in its original form, so the bayonet still attaches to it. And so this one actually belongs to my brother okay so my father asked me to see if i could fix it up because do you see there's a few really horrible rust spots on it okay so this thing was lying in the ceiling of the house if i can remember correctly and he forgot it there and then recently he found it and he gave it to me to try and fix up normally you would not sand or anything olden day things like this you don't do this to antiques okay um because remember the patina is kind of the whole thing you're going for um but if i can remember correctly there were like more than five million of these made so these things are extremely old but they are not that rare you can buy them you get cheap ones you get more expensive ones but you can still find them quite easily okay now on this side we have different markings. We have a lot of... Um, every time it's it went through quality control, it got a check. Okay. So there's lots of the Great Britain checks everywhere. And then we have the... What do you call that cross thing? Um, I cannot remember the correct name. But I'll put it in the description. Anyway, so these are the checks. Um and then also sometimes on the pommel you can find a number and that will be your, um, what's it, your group or your, I don't know, to which 
section you were attached during the war. Okay, other interesting thing, these pommels are made of wrought iron. So if you sand it down and etch it, you can actually see the wrought iron. Um, the guard, this is made of normal mild steel. And this, uh, the high carbon steel, uh, it might, uh, it will be something like, I think, 1075, something like that. Okay, um, also, this was also known as the sword bayonet, because it is big enough to be used as a sword. Okay, so quite a terrifying weapon. Anything related to war is terrifying, and standing in a trench with a bayonet on a gun, stabbing people, yeah, definitely horrifying thing to think about but this is a thing of beauty if i can remember correctly this is walnut and i see something has been chewing on this or it was beaten over here so i'm going to try and spruce this up a bit without destroying any of it i can the blade is still in fantastic fantastic shape okay better than most so i'm gonna see if i can take the rust off um without really sanding it i'll see what i can do or how bad the rust is once i get in there and then i will show you again at the end what it looks like but this is a beautiful bayonet um my father didn't bring the sheath with but the sheath has got the teardrop um what do you call that thing the knob on the side with the metal at the top and at the bottom and then the big fat welt where it's been sewn and leather on the middle like a thick hardy leather um, maybe if I can get him to bring that also we can show you the whole finished effect when we're done but for now I'm quickly going to go through this and see what I can do to make this better um, these fullers are extremely deep and I suppose that was to save weight while still leaving this fat part at the end so it would be strong enough to be able to stab and do its normal duties okay I'm back with the model 1907 um, bayonet and let me show you how I did this. Okay, look at the guard or the thing that attaches. Okay, I got all the rust off. Um, eventually I had to revert to sanding unfortunately, but I tried to leave as much of the old patina or the old on here as I could. Um, here in the handle you can see a slight discoloration where I had to sand that down just to get the chew marks out. Um, I tried not to polish anything too much. You can see that beautiful old wrought iron pommel. This has been cleaned and it works beautifully. I don't know if you can see in there, but if you press that then the mechanism, so that works nicely. Um, over there we have the X uh, and then all the check marks and then if you could see the horrible thick rust that was on here I took it off without taking off too much of the patina because remember this thing is 103 years old and it saw at least one world war and however many other skirmishes okay I'll take it outside I didn't put the edge on here but it's sharp enough to do what it's supposed to do and you can see a few nicks in the blade that might have been from war or playing outside. I cannot remember what I did with this thing when I was small. But it looks beautiful. Beautiful round spine. Okay. So I'm going to show you a few pictures outside. But yes, this was quite fun having it with me. I wanted to wait until I had the sheath and the gun to put it all together and show you. Um, but yeah, that didn't happen and I'm in a hurry to get this out so stay safe happy and have a good one bye bye quick look at the 1907 model bayonet for the Lee Enfield 303 Chuck. Chuck. step step okay please excuse my work dungeon um, but I did eventually have to give that infield once over with this M3, um, what do you call it, grinding disc. It's a soft thing, um, just to get the deepest rust out.
Chicago Forge. Okay, that was just to get the deepest rust off and then I just buffed the handle for a second to get it all nicely done.